Blue Da Vinci gave me a call yesterday. We sat down for about an hour, talked about everything. He revealed some incredible information. I'm going to share it with y'all. You can watch um, half of it here. And the other half, you're going to have to tune into the podcast on Apple, Spreaker, and all of those podcasting she, platforms. Uh, what she did, 2009, she motherfucking banned up a nigga named Terry White out of Atlanta. Yeah. Right? She banned up the Terry White nigga. And then, um, and then they awarded her fifty thousand dollars from the sale of this nigga property. When they sold his property, the money they came back from it, or the taxes or whatever, they gave her. They had put her in for an award. The, the feds put her in for an award, so she collected fifty thousand dollars off of the motherfucking um, off of her turning the nigga the information in and shit. Right. Damn. Then two thousand ten, she became a paid informant for the government. Okay, and then that's when she started working on the cuff shit. You know what I'm saying? So wow. that shit just was crazy with how all that shit went. And then what niggas try to do is they try to come at me like I'm a rat. So now let's go dig into me right quick. First yeah. and foremost, first and foremost, what, let's figure out where is the origin of people calling Blue a rat? Where does it come from? The origin of people calling Blue a rat comes from Big Beach. Okay? It okay. comes from him himself. Okay. So when I first got locked up, when I got locked up back then, right before I was finna go to my sentencing and shit, this fucking limo come out. The police got their hands on this black limo that had a million dollars and some guns in it. Yeah, okay? I, I remember that. So, Meech was telling niggas on the phone, he can't believe, because at the time, it would seem like, I guess, it would seem like I was the last person to come through to, like, to get that knew about this house that get arrested. Everybody else was already in jail that knew about the house, where the car was at, or whatever, and then, or they knew about the car. Nobody said nothing. It never came out, okay? But now five days before I'm finna get sentenced or something like that, this information come out that the feds got it. So niggas is trying to put one and two together like, damn, this nigga Blue had to tell on that shit. Everybody else is locked up that knew about it. Right. He's the last one. And now he only getting five years. Yeah, he told about it. It was one of them things. And he was saying that shit to people like Jay Diggs, bitch ass. So he on the phone with Jay Diggs and told the nigga Jay Diggs, man, I love this nigga Blue, but the nigga a rat. Because he's telling J.D. that I told about this limo without being a gangster first and checking some paperwork and figuring out who told about the limo. He just convicted me of it. It's like what J.Bo is doing right now. He's trying to self-convict me of these niggas is the law, I guess. They just self-convict niggas now. That's what gangsters do these days. Right. I'm cut from a club where the gangsters go through the federal paperwork or the state paperwork and they find out what people said, what they did, what led to a conviction, and really do the gangster shit to figure out who's labeled a rat and then they handle their business from that point on. You don't just get on the internet or get on the phone and call somebody a rat or talk to somebody and, or talk about somebody like that and you ain't got what it is that you saying. You just saying it out the crack of your ass because it's how you feel or it's what you think. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's like this. If I don't like you, nigga, whatever I say about you ain't gonna be good. Period. So you can't be just saying shit about people and you don't have no information. You know what I'm saying? So when Meech did that, that's what opened up this whole can of worms. This was 2008. Right. All right. So now even back then, we I got it cleared up. I would have my lawyer get the paperwork, pull the paperwork. We figure out that the person that actually told about this limo was Ralph Sims, a nigga named Ralphie, a nigga that j Bo brought around, one of his men from St. Louis, okay? okay. It was Ralph. Okay. Now, Ralphie told about this limo, and then once Meech get this information, he has to do what now? Apologize, Apologize. to Blue. Yeah. Oh, man, my bad. I knew it couldn't have been you, but shit. I, ain't, I forgot all about Ralphie. He had came around that motherfucker. He had just came around that bitch. It don't matter what you forgot, because the point is the damage is already done. So now I'm being labeled a snitch to all the people that had heard it before you could get your hands on the paperwork and do the gangster shit and figure it out. Now you're trying to go call people and retract it. It's too late. It's already out there. This person is told this person, this person said this, this person, this shit is all over the world. Niggas calling me a rat everywhere I look in 2008 when I was in the joint right. for about two weeks until I had to, I had to have the paperwork in the motherfucking office in the what's the name? I had the people showing the people my motherfucking paperwork. I mean, the paperwork on who actually told on that shit. You know what I'm saying? That's I had to have my name cleared about that shit while I was in the jail. You right. feel what I'm saying? So right. now we speed up to a later time and now that's taken care of, but now nigga want to still call Blue a snitch because they got to figure out how he snitched because they heard it from somewhere. So now when niggas go digging and digging and digging and try to figure out how I snitch, niggas find that these people took me to a debriefing, okay? But the debriefing was a part of my, uh, was a part of my plea, my plea meeting for my plea agreement, okay? Because I was, uh, uh, being put in for a safety valve 
then I got to have a debriefing meeting with the government. Which all of this shit, I'm 20 some years old and my first offense, nigga, I never been through none of this. I didn't know none of this shit that was going on. All they did was put me in handcuffs, grab me by the neck or the elbow, nigga, and just put me wherever they wanted to. I've never volunteered to go to a debriefing of knowingly and knowing what it is and what it was the parameters of it. None of that. They never, uh, the feds had never explained nothing to me and nothing. They only ever grabbed me while captured and take me and place me in different rooms. Number one, let's be clear. Blue has never volunteered to go anywhere to give any information to anybody. Now, I did have to go with my lawyer present and sit down in the room and go over all of the shit that all these rat ass niggas on T-side was saying about me and go through all their statements to see if I want to fight the shit or if I want to lay down and plea out, okay? Now, when I did that, it, it was a debriefing. And with the debriefing, what they tried to do was ask me, like, hey, this is the story, this is what people said about you, what what do you have that ain't here that, you know what I'm saying, could help us and could help you? Number one, he don't got nothing. Y'all got more shit than he even knew in front of him. So he has no more information available for the government. That was my standpoint with my attorney. Now, niggas try to take this and flip it because they're still trying to find a way that I stitched because I never told. So they say in court, when we was in court, my attorney stood up and spoke for me. And he said that, uh, yeah, Mr. McKnight was willing to give information to the government or something to this extent. But he just didn't have any any information available. So there was no information given. So niggas trying to call me a rat because my lawyer got up and said I was willing to give information, but I just didn't have none. So niggas is trying to say, well, yeah, if he knew more than he would have told, which ain't true. Because if you look at this fact, if you know us, then you know who Bull, you know who Big Cub, you know who Baby Blue Rest in Peace is, you know who Llewellyn is, you know who uh, BKD is, you know who all these certain people is that come from California that I personally brought in myself. That were my childhood friends, okay? They didn't know Big Meech. They didn't know the niggas in Detroit. They didn't know none of that. I was just doing something, and I brought them all to Atlanta with us, okay? None of these niggas went to prison, bro, for BMF. Not one of them. Bro didn't go. The nigga that's all over the motherfucking, the first, uh, what's that shit, uh, 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 um, that big interview that was on History Channel. Gang that bull. Gangland. That nigga ain't do a day for BMF. He went to the fans for something else in comp. He didn't go to the fans for BMF. My niggas didn't get locked up for BMF, bro. Only them niggas that was telling. See, now, that's another thing. Big Meech and the whole BMF got locked up in October 2005, right? Mm -hmm. That means that when the paperwork in 2004 went to the grand jury, the information that they had, they got all of the indictments that they indicted all the people from the initial information, right? And I never got indicted, right? right. That means that, that, that the government initially did not have enough information to indict me, right? So that means once they picked all these niggas up that they indicted, they all start telling. And then the information went back to the grand jury, and then I got picked up. So these niggas told on me. Okay, so they basically trying to t tell me that I told on some niggas that was already in jail, bro. These niggas was in jail for what they was indicted for for a whole year. Now, I get picked up a year later, and niggas is trying to tell me I told on them? <laughs> it don't work like that, bro. <laughs> like, that shit don't even make sense at all. If people really think about what's going on, like, my nigga, these niggas, bro, this what happened, bro. The dumbass nigga Doc. Had some dope in his house. Some niggas tried to do a home invasion. His man killed one of the niggas in the house. The feds came into the house. They found a ledger. They found all t them houses and cars and the names of the people and went the due dates of the payments of everything. That's how everything happened, bro. The feds went to all them addresses in St. Louis and wherever they was at, California, Detroit, wherever they was at, they kicked in all of those. They found processing plants. They found niggas. They found guns. They found drugs. That's how it all started, right? And then they came for Meech and us. Because all them niggas was telling. So once all them niggas told everything they had to tell, then they came from each of us and indicted, you know what I'm saying, all of them niggas. And then the whole next year, they indicted me. So now, let's add Blue last, number one, so he couldn't have told on all them niggas that was already locked up. They told on him to put him in jail. Right. Like, we got to clear all this shit up, bro. Because these niggas been having me looking crazy, and I just been quiet and seeing who all is talking and who all is with this shit for the last two, three years. Let me ask it you just, something. Let me ask you something. Yeah. Why? You, you know, we've, we've seen a lot of interviews with J-Bo. What do you think he would say if people would ask him about Deion Gatlin? He ain't going to say shit because, because motherfucking, them niggas from the projects had threw his ass in that trunk and riding around with his ass smoking blunts. Talking about, yeah, we'll let you out later. You talking about, talking about nigga, you can't sell no dope down here, nigga. We're going to smoke your stupid ass, little boy, little Brown Eminem looking ass nigga. See, that's what they were doing to him. They were pressing the fuck out of him. He's soft. J-Bo's soft, bro. 
I don't give a fuck what nobody feel about it. He's soft. That nigga soft as a hot bowl of ice cream. He go, when that shit go down, boy, that boy gonna go up under the car somewhere. Why was they pressing I, I ain't never him? never seen that nigga fight with us. Why was the guy, huh? why was the Gatlins pressing him? Because you said, why was they what? Why was the Gatlins, why was they pressing him? Why did they put him in a trunk? I mean, shit, because it was about, you know, uh, obviously it was about territory and drugs and money and shit. They ain't want the nigga selling dope out there. They had the shit locked up. I guess, I'm just guessing that. I don't know that to be a fact. But shit, that's the only other reason, or they just didn't like him. I don't know. I ain't talked to them about that. I don't know I just had the nigga name that put him in the trunk, but I erased it off my board. I was going to hit him with that shit and make his ass cry. What? But I ain't going to even put the man name out there like that. Cuff told, Cuff told me the nigga thing. So yeah, nigga, tell the nigga this name. Nigga, he, and the whole city know who it is, nigga. Niggas know who it is. That's why I see that. j Bo put them dumbass glasses on and come out there sweating and shit. Like he got motherfucking diabetes and shit coming off through his skin and shit playing. Like, nigga, you ain't never been no nigga to get in front of no motherfucking camera and talk, nigga. I put this nigga in front of the camera one time for the motherfucking Raw Report. He was stumbling over his words then. Like, these niggas ain't them, them type of niggas. So I don't even understand why they even want to try to do this with me, knowing I'm going to beat him the fuck up. Like, when I speak cuz, I'm going to beat him up. Period. Nigga, point blank, cuz, these niggas know what's up with me. I always been this nigga. I'm the same nigga that was in front of the camera on all those smack DVDs doing all the yelling, checking niggas walking up and down the street in real time when you didn't see no big meeches and J-Bows, nigga. That was me, nigga, in front of all them niggas in real time on the street, nigga, walking up and down the street with this BMF shit, not in the house counting money, nigga. Right. It was me, nigga, the foot soldier leader, nigga. I was the leader of the foot soldiers, nigga, for the real crew, nigga, that protect me's life when the nigga wolf come and try to smoke it. What the fuck? What was Southwest T and them niggas at the end? j Bo didn't do nothing. You was, you was Man, there. these niggas better stop playing like we ain't like that. We the one. You was there at the incident with Wolf? No, I wasn't there. I was in the studio. That was the first night of the 45 days. I mean, the third night of the 45 day studio session where this nigga Jeezy bitch ass signed all them contracts out of my motherfucking studio session on Big Meech time. Because Big Meech didn't have a mental capacity to understand what was going on and called me in L.A. and say, hey, man, this nigga finna sign a whole bunch of record deals. You need to get down here. Me tied up in L.A. because we didn't know what was going on with the wolf shit, so he had everybody go to where the state they was from. While I'm sitting in L.A., and nigga Meech called me like, man, I ain't got nobody to bring me nothing down here. Get me somebody to do some shit. So I got the call to see who I got down there to go do some running for Meech for me while I'm out of town. So I called Jeezy. He in my studio session. I left one. Nigga, I paid for a 45-day studio session, nigga, at, at 1500 a day or something, 1200 a day for 45 days. Up front, brown paper bag. Third day of the, of the studio session is when the shooting happened. The fourth, the fifth day, me say, hey, man, look, everybody need to go to their states until we figure out what's going on with this shit, and then we're going to all come back. All right, bet. While I'm gone, I tell Jeezy, look, I ain't going to kill the studio session. You just stay in there and work, work, work. It's where you get trapped or die and all this good-ass music from, okay? He came out of my studio session and patchwork with this shit. And out of the same studio session, it was Jazzy Faye next door doing beats for cash money. He ended up signing with Jazzy Faye and Block Entertainment and Puffy, and then at the same time, simultaneously, at that same A room, on my bump of the money, that nigga signed the Def Jam. But he did all this shit after we had spent all that money on the nigga on the bus, paying all them DJs and promoting him as a BMF member to be one of the BMF artists. That was my work at promoting him as a BMF artist. Why Def Jam even wanted to sign him? But Meech didn't know no music. Remember, I told you from DJ Pooh. DJ Pooh told him, look, we, I know y'all don't know none of this shit, but Blue know it all. So Meech allowed this nigga on the influence of double stack pills and weed to drink and them hoes from out of Magic City every night. And Meech allowed that nigga to sign all them contracts without us. And see, what niggas don't understand is I didn't meet Meech and them on the pretense of being the biggest drug dealer in the world. I didn't give a fuck about how much drugs the niggas were selling. As long as he had the money to do what I needed to do, that's all that mattered to me. Initially, you feel me? I didn't even know what drugs they were selling and shit. I wasn't there for that. I didn't care about that shit. I just wanted to be like cash money, nigga. I was Birdman in my eyes. Now I'm going to go get $20 million. I done learned how to do it with Razzcast. I done been knowing all these people. All I needed is some motherfucker with the bag that I could do what I need to do so I could get there and make it happen. And this Jeezy is a product of that, okay? Jeezy is, Jeezy is a product of me coming to Atlanta still being a fresh West Coast gangbanger, and it was 2001, 2002. They wasn't on gangbanging like that in Atlanta yet. I was looking goofy to these niggas. They couldn't understand my lingo. They didn't understand what I was saying. They couldn't really get with the music. They didn't like the shit like that. It, we was cool, but all this West Coast exhibit sound and that shit, this nigga coming with, man, they on Lil John. Hey, stop it. Hey, whoa, bonky, crawl. That's what they was on. I was, hey, love, nigga, slide through the motherfucking cut, nigga, with the gangster. Like, I'm, I'm on some corrupt and dad shit, and I'm out there. So being, now I got to stop being the artist, and I got to be the person that runs the company. I got to get one of these niggas from the South, let them talk this South shit. 
tough as BMF shit that we doing, but look like a LA gangster. And that's going to be my celebrity. And that is what I created in Jeezy. If you look at Jeezy and listen to his music pre BMF or pre Blue Da Vinci, you can see the transition and the change. His last album cover before he had the one where he's sitting on all the Coke boxes with the fucking 501s on with the, and he wearing Cortez and he wearing fucking Converse, motherfucking Chuck Taylors and Dickies and t-shirts. That nigga wasn't dressing like that. That nigga was looking like Blue Da Vinci. Go look at Blue Da Vinci shit before all that and then look at this nigga shit and you're going to see that Jeezy turn into a Blue Da Vinci nigga with no braids. From the rags on the head to the, to the house, to the clothes he wear, everything because that was the plan initially. I told a nigga you got to wear this shit like a costume, bro. I, I heard Dr. Dre tell Exhibit Razkaz and Safir this shit one day. He, Razkaz will tell you, nigga. It, 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 Dr. Dre told them niggas they were finna do the Golden State Warriors group. I was in the in the apartment, nigga, at uh, uh, Exhibit Apartment, nigga, in North Hollywood, nigga. Safir, Razkaz, and Exhibit was there. This before Exhibit Pop. And that nigga, Dr. Dre, came in that motherfucker and told him, well, y'all gotta put on the costume. What's the costume? Shit, it's the NWA costume, the costume to make the West Coast work. When you're doing music, y'all niggas gotta look the part. Razkaz, my cousin, here he go. I'm, I'm hip hop. I ain't even no gays. I don't do that shit. That shit is corny. I ain't wearing that shit. He tells Dr. Dre he ain't wearing it. Right. Safir. Hey, man, you know, I'm from the Bay Area, man. We don't even do the gang banging up there, man. We don't, we don't even do that up there, man. Exhibit, the only nigga like, whatever you want, boss. <laughs> so what do you get from that situation? You get Exhibit, nigga, is the one that got all the bag and all the attention put on him, and it wasn't no Golden State Warriors, nigga. Exhibit went off the sale for Platinum yep. Records. Yep. So this is the same thing that I t- tried to tell Jeezy then. Bro, you got to look like a L.A. I heard Dr. Dre say this shit before. I'm working off what I didn't heard and learn from the greats. Why, why did you feel, why did you feel that looking like an LA artist would work for a guy from Georgia? Okay, let me tell you why. Because it, it because it works for the people everywhere now. You see all these niggas with tight dicky suits on, my nigga in New York. Stop playing. <laughs> it's still working for them now. Everybody's a blood or everybody's a crip. Right now in the industry. And it's not just on the West Coast, right or wrong. Yeah, you're right. I've yeah. seen that happening before it happened, homeboy. I was yeah. just before my time. Well, I was the one. I was one of the pioneers to make that happen and make people start doing that. That's what that was. That's why. I, that's why I was doing that because of what it turned into it worked. The only thing that didn't work about it is that nigga Leach didn't have the business capacity to have Jeezy sign the contracts through BMF, bro. We would have been had. I would have had an implant in Def Jam, my nigga. Right. Was BMF would have been. I would have had Meach in the office, nigga, in New York. On a whatever 52nd floor, nigga, in Def Jam, we'd have had our own office, and CTE would have signed, would have been signed to BMF as a label, and Jeezy would have been signed to itself at CTE. BMF would have been signed to Def Jam as an implanted label at Def Jam. That was the plan, bro. Got it. But me can't understand that plan, because he was just street nigga all dope. He don't know nothing about that shit, so right. it's just me by myself. And if I don't know the moves that's being made with Jeezy and Meech on that end, and Jeezy kept it from me. That's why I say he's a sucker. He didn't call me and say, I'm finna sp- sign all these record deals, nigga, it's on, so I can fly down there and say, hold on, what's going on, bro? You finna sign all this shit without us? I said, we just spent all this, I done gave you this Benz, this nigga that bought you a hundred, some thousand dollars worth of jury. We didn't put you on this burgundy bus, drove you around, keep giving DJ $3,000 a night, don't play nothing but your tape, and we ain't finna get nothing? Yeah. Then we would have pressed the nigga and took all the motherfucking publishing and owned that nigga and had him pressed. So, they caught us at a perfect position. They thought BMF was going to end. Meech was being accused of a double homicide. Coach K bitch ass was over there. I ain't going to say that because he didn't look out for me later on, but he know what he did. Him and Kinky B and Zizi got together and said, we got to do this without them because they finna get in trouble and we got to do it because we got the opportunity. So they snatched the opportunity and ran off with it and didn't include us with it. And so, Jeezy so, never so, so, did so, nothing else for so, us. So, so, so typically... He did the, the shit that niggas typically do. They found their window. They rolled y'all until they found their window, and then he ran off when y'all got in trouble. Basically, yep. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, that's, that's no... And then, and then, but hold on. Don't don't give the, all these BMF niggas the credit either, because guess what? These niggas didn't even like Jeezy. All right, my, number one, I'm telling you, I was the only nigga doing music. When I first met me, them, new niggas couldn't even come around. Like, I couldn't meet a nigga and get cool with him, and he come around and hang out. Okay, <laughs> I was only starting to be able to do that in like 2000 and probably two <clears throat> started in Atlanta when I got deep, deep into the music and I had to meet people and deal with people for the music. And then that opened it up to new people being able to come around. But all of the BMF people would treat those new people that come around like, oh, these is music niggas. We the real gangsters. 
this is no ENT. This is no ENT. But what these niggas don't know is our original crew of BMF niggas is BMF ENT, and the ENT stood for every nigga trusted. Mm. So if you're not inside of that crew, you're going to think it's about some entertainment shit. Mm. So niggas like the little bitch-ass nigga, ooh we he runs around and he's got a whole crew, no ENT. That's to diss me, to disrespect me and whoever was doing music to show that they wasn't the drug dealers and the gangsters. They was the music niggas. So when I first met Jeezy, niggas wasn't fucking with Jeezy. Why? He was a part of the music side. So niggas, when he come to Magic City, we all in the club. I'm on the stage with Meech and the hoes and the shit. And niggas will come grab me. Hey, man, your boy out here, your boy Jeezy or whatever, you want to let him in? Like, damn, bro, y'all niggas right there. Y'all know he coming to fuck with us. Y'all let him in. But the niggas wouldn't even want to let the nigga in. I know he's not one. The niggas didn't even want to let the nigga in. You know what I'm saying? So they ain't fuck with him like that until he signed all them record deals. Once he signed all the record deals, everybody made, I was mad. But niggas was looking at me like I was hating because nobody understood. They didn't understand that now we got to keep selling drugs because we ain't going to go get the big budget deal and be all up in the office and I can show Meech a different way. That's what I was around for. Yeah. I wasn't around to, for Meech to continue to sell drugs forever. I was around for niggas to fucking make millions, nigga, and come up. I was around, to, you know what I'm saying, for niggas to make millions legal and come up. You feel me? Yeah. And, and I did it. I know I did it. We, I got up to that point, but... What happened was the nigga that was in control, the leader of the shit. I wasn't the leader. I acted as leader a lot of times, but I wasn't the leader. Meech was the leader. And we just had a leader that wasn't knowledgeable enough to put us in the right position as far as business and legality is concerned. Right. You, you feel me? He could put us in the right position with some paper, with some illegal money and shit like that right quick. And then so we could be straight on the street. But he did never put us in a position to legalize ourselves and for our kids' kids to have something off all that work we put in and off niggas dying and off niggas doing all that prison time so collectively. Is, is, so is that is that the reason why? Because I hear a lot of black people say this, like, the niggas had all that money and they ain't, they ain't create no businesses. They don't live no. leave no businesses behind. Yeah, that's because Meech had, a, Meech had this thing where he didn't want no business. Like, he felt like he was going to get in trouble by fucking with other people. So if he keep other people away from him and out his mix, period, then he shouldn't have to worry as much about the Fed. Yeah. So he didn't want to do, he didn't want to hear your real estate deal. He, at the end, towards the end, he tried to open up a club, but then the Fed was all over that. And that further, and they're like, man, that's exactly why I don't want to do no shit like that. We tried to open up fuel, and the Fed was all over the shit, taking pictures and videos from across the street at the furniture store and shit. So he was like, man, hell no, nah, fuck this legal business shit. Cause they, but that by that time, the fucking investigation was on. You know what I'm saying? And there's still ways you could do. It's like this. If I, if I knew being what I know now, we would have been in a different position. And I just wasn't in a position to where I could call a final shot. You feel me? And then also, when I was at home in Cali, I didn't even know them niggas was entertaining the deal. They were sending me music all the time, and I thought he was just recording, and they turning the records in, and I'm like, yeah, this bang, oh, this crazy. I mean, LA playing this shit, like, boy, we gonna drop this shit, shit gonna be crazy. But when I come back, we all reconvene, nigga, we gonna put this shit out the right way, and then we gonna run up to New York and go get a three, four million dollar deal. Jeezy signed for $750,000 without us. Mm. See, I, would, I wasn't gonna sign right then. We was gonna put all the records out. The records that he got signed before the music even hit. Because the, the, the labels knew it was going to hit. See, when you got them at that point, you're supposed to drop the shit on your own. And then once you drop it and you start doing it, doing the numbers from off the hype you already got, then that's when the labels up your, your price. And then we can go in there as a company and not as a solo artist, and we can get a company signed for some millions and not one artist signed for seven right. And But, you know, it was me running the company, and I wasn't able to run a company right then because of that double homicide, and I was at home in L.A. I was thinking I knew what was going on, but instead of Meech was the only other one to communicate shit from that side. And that shit was going on in real time. He was high, bro. He was on double stack pills and he ain't know nothing about the music industry. He just felt like, oh, yeah, Jesus, we're going to be rich. It's going to be on. No, nigga, you don't get a dollar. You're not included in the deal, nigga. Them nigga with Jesus is going to turn his back and not give you shit, boy. Look up. In the next 10 years, then go look up the record I got called Got Right with Meech on it in 2014. If I was a snitch, what the fuck Meech doing on my songs in 2014 isn't Jesus. Yeah. You can talk to niggas that have been sitting next to me all these years and hear, have me watch me have four-hour conversations with Meech, nigga, since I've been home and he's been in the prison. Yeah. I just stopped talking to Meech in 2017. He stopped talking to me when he found out that I had that paperwork. When I told him I had that paperwork, that's the last time I ever talked to him. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, all these niggas wrong. And then, then, then let me tell you the biggest part about this shit, gang. 
Because I, I want to give you a lot of information because I, I love the way you present your information. You feel me? Right. You, you're a real smart nigga. Like your articulation, how you put shit across, you you know how to do it. Like me, a lot of times I go on a rant and people be having to grab this shit out the sky. You feel me? Right. But you know how to slow it down and give it to them how they can really be perceptive and receive the shit the right easy, way. I think it's easy to tell the truth. I said that on my live last night. I said, of Blue's lying, man, that's one of the most expert, perfect lies that's ever been created. Like, you know when you... <laughs> it's easy to tell. Hey, I'm going to tell you the real test, gang. Look, this is the real test right here. This is what you can say, nigga. Tell people to watch j Bo's interview on mute and watch my interview on mute. That's my test. Because you can see, with, without hearing any information, you can just watch the body language of the two people, and you can tell who's lying and who is not true about what they're saying or who's looking all up in the air trying to make shit up. And you, if you read a body language and shit of a liar, and then you watch fucking j Bo's presentation, you can see every time he lied. And so he tells on himself. And he, he, he got glasses on, and you can still see he's looking all up in the air, looking over here for some information he don't got. See, that ain't, that ain't how it is when you're telling the truth. When you're telling the truth, the information spills from your soul. Right. You don't have to look up in the air and look over here and think about the truth, bro. Right. 